Turn with me, if you would, in your scriptures, in your Bible, to the scripture, to the book of Philippians, chapter 4. And I want us to read just one verse. Philippians, chapter 4, and verse 13. A lot of you will already know it very well. Stand if you would. Short, I know. But still, we want to stand. God is worthy and His, and His Word is so wonderful. And I, I trust that as the Word resonated with me and this Scripture, <clears throat> excuse me, and I said it in my heart and in my mind when Catherine mentioned that, that I trust that it will resonate with you. And I trust that we will take it to heart and very simple but listen to what it says Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 everybody have it here we go once again Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me somebody say amen, amen. you may be seated I, I can do all things. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that gives me the strength to do it. Wow, what a, what a powerful thought. You and I understand that you don't have to go very far, look very hard, or listen very long until you hear individuals that saying it, maybe not verbally, maybe not out loud, but in the way they carry themselves, the way they approach what they do, even in their demeanor, they are crying out, I can't, I can't, I can't. And we know that the worst part about all of this, and this is not some new phenomenon that is simply taking place in the modern church and even here in 2020, but it's something that's been around from the very beginning of time in mankind. And that is, is that this attitude of negativity has slipped into the church. Maybe I shouldn't even say that it's uh, infiltrated the church. Maybe uh, in some cases it would be better to say that it has inundated the church. Uh, that even so many individuals within the house of the Lord. And, and because of that negativity, individuals seem so much more frustrated, aggravated, half dedicated. Why? Because if you do not believe in the cause or if you do not believe that you can do what it is that you are called to do, then, then you're not going to give it your best effort. So, so this, this attitude, I cannot, I can't, I can't, I can't in the church. And so individuals in the church, they're saying, you know, I can't really serve God. I can't be faithful to God. I can't be pleasing to the Lord. Uh, I can't be filled with the Spirit. I can't walk in the Spirit. I can't be obedient to the Spirit. I can't obey the Word of God and what God wants me to do. I can't overcome Come this debilitating character flaw that I have in my life. Everybody's just going to have to accept me for who I am. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't overcome sin. I can't overcome temptations. I can't overcome my habits, my addictions. I can't uh, love my wife the way and my spouse the way that the Lord wants me to. I can't love my neighbor and certainly I can't love my enemy. Could I go on and on and on and on and on? But this attitude even in the church of I can't. I can't. I can't. And somehow I would say that probably you and I, we join this wretched course of I can't more times than we want to admit ourselves. 
As we said from the beginning, we may not verbalize it to anywhere, anybody else, but in our heart there is that spirit of negativity and doubt and fear of I can't. And you see, that's the way it is with some, and really, I guess, all of us. Some individuals, they are hampered by hindrances or that which they are addicted to. And, and that could be a multitude of things. And so it just hinders them. Others, it may be emotions. It may be moods that masters them. Others and we all struggle with is our thought process that paralyzes us and fear is bred in our hearts and our minds and let me tell you uh, the spirit of fear and I can are diametrically opposed to each other uh, because if we're constantly saying I can't I can't uh, it's probably because of fear that is there in our hearts. And so then the very hope of having a radiant, resilient, relevant, resourceful life for God, it is just cut off and snuffed out. And so many times then when we have this attitude of I can't, there is never the casting of a vision. There's never the taking a stand. There is never accepting a challenge. Why? Because I can't. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. And so therefore, there's no progression in the things of God. There's no growth in grace. And churches are stalemated. And individuals as well. They stay right where they are. And that is if, if things go well uh, because they don't grow. But if you maintain that spirit spirit of negativity, I can't, I can't, I can't, then pretty soon you're going to begin to go backwards and your relationship with Jesus Christ is going to suffer tremendously. But here in the midst of all the negativity, we have a guy, the Apostle Paul, that stands up and says, in the midst of all of those, it says, I can't. He says, I can. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Somebody say that, I can. I can. <laughs> I can. Amen. Uh, this is... Um, this is not a promotional speech here uh, and uh, to try to get you all jacked up and that kind of thing. That's not what it's all about. This is truth today. And we may wonder how in the world could the Apostle Paul say that? And we're going to look at that as well a little bit later on here in the message. But for right now, I just want us to see the reality that he can even say it. And so that's my first point. The reality of I can. The reality of it. It, it, it isn't for, for the Apostle Paul and even for us. It, it isn't just some mantra. It isn't just some repetition. It isn't just some phrase, as I said, that we try to get ourselves uh, pumped up and excited of, of saying, I can, I can, I can, I can. And if I say it enough times, then maybe it'll resonate in my mind or in my heart. And maybe I'll feel a little better. Maybe the fear, fear will be dissipated. Maybe... Uh, maybe encouragement will come in a little more or whatever the case is. No, it isn't that at all. And even for the Apostle Paul as a minister of the gospel, the I can, it was not the theme of some message per se. It's not the theme of some uh, teaching series that he's doing. It's not the message of some self-help organization that he was the head of. No, it was reality. He really knew it, believed 
believed it in his heart, and that's how he lived his life. I can. I can do all things. I can do them. So it was, it was reality. He fleshed it out in his life. He recognized, does that mean he was on top of the world all the time? <laughs> Hardly. In fact, if you look at the Apostle Paul, there's probably very few people that has gone through in their lifetime what he went through. His life was not a bed of roses. His life was not in the lap of luxury and, you know, having everything that he needed. But, but he knew what it was to have great trials. He knew what it was. In fact... I want, to, want us to look at, and I've asked Ken to pull this up, even in our context of what we've read, we could have read verses 11 and 12. And it really kind of sets the stage of this. This is reality for Paul. It isn't just, once again, some mantra that he just keeps saying and repeating. Notice what he says in verse 12, 11 rather, and then verse 12 and 13. And then as he gets into the text of what we've read in verse 13. Uh, in verse 11 he said, not that I speak in respect of one. In other words, he says, what I'm about to say here, I'm not saying it because I want you to think, I want you to think that I need something or want something from you. So no, I'm not saying this because I'm wanting something from you, but I'm saying this because it's true. Praise God. I'm saying this because it's fact. How many times does individuals say something in the presence of others that there's no ulterior motives involved? And Paul said, look, there's no ulterior motives here. I, I'm not saying it for that reason. I'm saying it because it's true in my life and it can be true in your life as well. And so then when he sets, sets the record straight on that, he said, for I have learned. Now we know that learning is a process and we'll see that a little bit later here. Uh, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. And when he talks about contentment, yeah, it's, it's contented with such things as you have. But I believe he's talking about a balance here. That no matter what state, emotionally, physically, no matter what state I'm in, I want to keep an even keel. I, I, I want to keep, I, I don't want to get off on the deep end on this side. And I don't want to get off on the deep end of this side. And then notice what he says there, that the two extremes of where he's trying to maintain this contentment and this balance in his life of where he says that he can be contented. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. I like those words. I know what it is to be abased. That is, I know what it is to have want. I know what it is to have tremendous want in my life. And then Paul, he goes on and he says, uh, abasement here, that it's, it's not only the needs that you may have in your life, but, but how individuals treat you. Paul says, I know what it is where people are after me and hunting me like a wild animal in the wilderness. I know what it is that people want to destroy my life for the stand that I take. I know. And he, you know, in other places you can read where he was stoned several times. He was shipwrecked. He was maligned. Uh, all of these things. Paul says, look, I know what it is to be on that side of need. But he said, I also know what it is to abound. And you know, some people, whereas the enemy may not get them through adversity, he can destroy them through prosperity. 
So we only think maybe in the in the sense of adversity. Oh, you know, I gotta I gotta hang on there. But some individuals have been utterly destroyed and lost out with God because of the prosperity that the Lord has given unto them. They feel like they don't need the Lord. But 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 Paul is saying, and I've got to hurry. But he's saying, I know what it is. I want to be content in a basement. I want to be contenting, be content in abounding. So it doesn't matter. I, I want to, I want to keep that evenness, and I want to be content. And then you go on in verse twelve. He uh, continues a little further on, uh, and he says, not only to be abased and to abound, uh, where and in all things, no matter where I am, no matter what it is whether prosperity or adversity, I've known about it. And he said, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer needs. So what, what he's simply saying there, there's that instructing again. He's not saying that somebody has instructed me, but he's saying life has instructed me. And we know that instruction can be a process. That's why you start in kindergarten, preschool, and go all the way to 12th and get a diploma. And then if you want to further your education in college or university, depending, whatever. But, but it's a process. We don't learn everything overnight. But Paul's not talking about the process. He's saying, here's the conclusion that I have come to. That in your life, in service to God, there's going to be the sunshine and there's going to be the rain. And if, if you're going to allow the sunshine uh, to get you out of keel or the rain to get you out of keel, uh, you're going to live an up and down life. But he's saying, I have learned and I've come to the conclusion that in everything that passes my way and affects me directly and even in a severe fashion it affects me uh, the reason I can keep that, that balance and have that contentment is because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me so it's reality to him. It's reality, no matter what he goes through. He doesn't allow that fear to grow to the point where he feels that he's nothing. He can do nothing, be nothing, accomplish anything. So it is reality. And I, I could go through the Word of God. I think that you and I in this 21st century, 2020, in the year of... I think so many times when we read about the Apostle Paul making this statement or we read some of the great acts of the patriarchs or those in the Word of God of what they were able to accomplish, somehow I think that we feel they're super Christians. Yeah, okay, pastor. You know, Paul was able to do that because he was he had an S on his chest. He was super Christian. But we fail to realize that these individuals have passions, they have desires, they have weaknesses, they have insufficiencies, just like you and I have. They're, they're human just like we are. But it's because they allow the Lord to move and work in and through them is, is the reason that, that uh, just normal people can do extraordinary things. It's because of the Lord. And so this, this attitude of I can, it's not just for Moses who initially said that he couldn't, but it's not just for him to be able to take the children of Israel through the Red Sea and dry ground, but, it, but it's for you and me that even when a, a difficult thing looms in front of us, uh, the Red Sea, and there's no way that we can go through, there's no way around, there's no way back, but I'm telling you that it's not just for Moses, but it's for you and me. I can praise God. 
I can overcome this situation. The I can attitude, it's not just for a young man called David as he took a sling and five stones out of the brook and went out onto the battlefield and he destroyed Goliath. So what are, what are those huge, gigantic giants that is looming in front of you? And instead of saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, hey, by the grace of God, say, I can. Yes, praise God, yes. I can. Once again, this isn't a motivational speech. This is truth. I can. I can. We talked about Gideon the last couple of weeks. Outnumbered four to one. And what a great shellacking the Midianites took. You know, Gideon could have said, Lord, you've whittled my army down to 300. I can't. I can't. And the Lord could continue to try to tell him why he could. And he could continue to come out saying, I can't. I can't. But, but initially, so many of these said, I can't initially. But later on, they stood firm for God and said, I can't. So just because you say, I can't initially, that doesn't mean that there's lack of faith or anything in there. Uh, but you cannot let that attitude dominate your life. I can. And you sisters, if you're thinking about just guys, what about Esther? Becoming the queen of the whole, the whole territory and the whole nation to save her people. I can. She initially said, I can't. But her cousin Mordecai said, you can. Yes. And then she said, I can. Yes. I can. And she did. What about Ruth? She lost everything. Her husband, her home. She lost everything. But, but later on, she found love again. Yes. Praise God. I can love again. I can have a relationship. I can serve God and have a good, healthy relationship. I I can, I can. What about Rahab? She was a prostitute, but she's in the genealogy of Christ. I can overcome whatever I, the, the lowest low that I may feel I'm in. I can, I can, I can. Hey, somebody say it again. I can. Praise God. I can. Boy, I could go on on that, but the reality of it. Thank you, Catherine, for, for this message. <laughs> I can. So not, I've got to hurry here, but not only the reality of it, it was real in the life of Paul, and it can be real in our heart as well as we go through day by day and whatever life throws at us during the course of that day. I can. I can. So not only the reality of it, but I'll, I'll just pause quickly here for a moment, and let's look at the realm of it. The realm of I can. Did you notice that Paul didn't stipulate, he didn't qualify? He didn't say, I can do the easy stuff. I can do all the elementary stuff. I can do all the insignificant stuff. Why would he say that? Everybody can do that. If it's easy as they say, anybody can do it. Everybody can do it. But he didn't say that. And neither did he say that I can do most everything. I can do 99.9% .9 of everything. No, notice that little three-letter word, all. A-L-L. -L. See it in your, in your text? I can do some things, most things, a high percentage. Yeah, I can do all. Wow. I would say that's pretty all-inclusive. And if, if, if we can do all things, then that makes me to know that whatever we are struggling with this morning. 
And the devil has convinced us that we can't do. I believe that's covered. I can do all things. All. I had so much fun doing what we cannot do and I don't want it to just be a extension and put it into the positive but I can I can live for God I can serve God I can be faithful to God I can be filled with the Spirit. I can be full of the Holy Spirit. I can walk in the Spirit. I can obey the Word of God and do what the Lord wants me to do. I can overcome that de debilitating character flaw. I can give, pay my tithe. I can overcome temptation. Yes. I can, I can, I can love not only my spouse and my neighbor as I should, but I can love my enemy. Yes. Amen. Let me just say here that, do you realize that the context, one of the contexts of what Paul's talking about is that of loving? If you go back to the very first verse in chapter 1, and I failed to have them to bring this up but if you have your bibles in chapter 4 verse 1 therefore my brethren dearly beloved <laughs> notice how much he, he he's he's saying how much he loves them philippians 4 verse 1 but it was not always that way if you look back in the book of acts and you see when Paul first went to Philippi, the Philippians, to whom he's writing to now, I mean, he nearly lost his life. They threw him in prison because people were accepting Christ. They threw him and Silas in prison, and it's in Philippi, Philippian jail, where he and Silas began to sing in the midnight hour. And the angel came in and unlocked the prison gates and set them free. So you see, some of these same individuals that hated Paul, wanted him to die, wanted him to be imprisoned. Now he's saying, you know what? I love you guys. Always have more and more and more and more. That's why a lot of people says when, when the Lord commands us, when the Lord commands us to love our enemies, people mistake that because they say, I don't have an oozy feeling towards that person. So that must mean I don't love them. Has nothing to do with feeling. Love. It can but initially, love is an act of the will. I choose. So how can we love our enemies? Even if I disagree with them on everything, I will treat you civilly. I will be kind to you. I will respect you. Yes. Something we see that in in our Congress folks, that they, they, have, they don't have an ability to do that. So they can say they have all the love in the world they want, but not the kind that Jesus talks about. Because if you love someone, you choose to not be vindictive. You choose not to try to destroy them for something they've said or done to you in the past. Paul said, some of you tried to kill me. But I can love you. Oh, come on, church. This is good stuff. Not because I'm doing the preaching, but because it's in the Word of God. I can. I can. I can. So the, the realm of I can is, is all things. 
But here's where I want to get to, and I'm going to close with this. Paul said, I can, the reality of I can, I can do all things. That's the realm of this I can attitude. But when he says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength to do it or strengthens me, that's the reason of I can. I can. Now here, I want you to notice that if we say we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, if He is the source of our strength of being able to do all things, and then we turn around and say, I can't, that's not only a reflection on us, but it's more reflection upon the Lord because if He's the one that strengthens us and we say, I can't, we're saying the Lord doesn't have the strength to be able to do this. Is my reasoning correct there? Once again, church, I understand that the mind and how we think, the attitudes that we carry mentally has an effect upon every facet of our lives. I understand that. In fact, if you go back into the context of this chapter 4, there's so much there. That Paul says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, whatsoever things are just, pure, lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these. So he's telling us that, yeah, your mind is a powerful organ. And how you think is going to display itself outwardly in what you do and what you say. Come on. But you see, this is not like Scientology where... If you just think it's not true, or if you think it's true, it will be true, or it will not be true. It's not mind over matter. No. That's not what Paul's talking about here. I can, I can, I can. And even though the mind, and, and when we get saved, one of the first things is the renewing of our mind. We have so much stuff up there, so much filth up there that is stored that, that we've, we've got to have that renewed. And, and it's, it's a process that takes the entirety of our life to cleanse and renew that mind through the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God. But, but here, let, let me just say this, that as important as is that we will do as the mind thinks, yet that's not what Paul's talking about here. I can do all things, he says, and he, but he doesn't stop there. He doesn't say, I can do all things simply because I think I can. And we're not like the little train that says, I think I can, I think I can. But we know we can, and it's not because it's simply in the mind. But we know we can because the Lord Jesus Christ is going to strengthen me, empower me, enable me to do whatever it is that I need to do that I could not never ever do achieve by my own wisdom, by my own strength, or by my, my own anything. It's through the Lord that I can do it. It's because of Him. So here this, the reason is because Christ gives us the strength. So when situations come our way, instead of letting them frustrate us, 
and immediately saying, I can't. Let it fuel us and say, I can. I can. So whatever the devil is tormenting, you have your fears. I have my own. And if you ask Cynthia, she's lived with me for a long, long time now. I am not by nature a guy that sees the glass half full. I see it not only half empty, but empty. So we're not talking about personality traits. We're not talking about personal giftedness that God has gifted us or talents that we may have. Uh, all of that's good, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about that I can do all things because I'm relying on the strength and the help of the Lord. I can. I can. Father in heaven, I thank you for this day. And Lord, I know it's a simple declaration of the Apostle Paul. And I know that my discussion of it is even more simple. But Father, that's the great thing about your declarations and your word. It's easy to understand. And Lord, it's really even easy to practice. And so help me today to stand up in the face of adversity or the face of prosperity. And help me to realize that I'm going forth in Jesus Christ I'm not going to allow either one of those things to hinder me hold me back keep me back and I can do all things through Jesus it's through you Lord because you are the one that strengthens us and gives us the wisdom gives us the ability gives us, overcomes our insufficiencies and enables me to do it. So when the devil whispers in my ear, shouts in my ear, rich gold eyes, and you can't, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot. Lord, I can do all things because the Lord is going to strengthen me. I thank you for it and I praise you for it. Bless this altar service and we'll give you the praise 